Formula Diana. Cai a tua barca aí. Deco aí. Vai, espera, subir, vamos. Antes da gemir. Opa! Cheater e blamba. Tio! Opa! Atio! A barba. Hello everyone, it's one minute up to the start of a Jeep MTB race in Ignalina. It's also a marathon one. One week ago we've been in Lepe, which is kind of uh, west coast of Lithuania. And now we are almost far to the east in Ignalina. And I will be participating in free laps distance. That means free laps by 26 kilometers each. So it's quite a lot of uh, struggle here. It was very hot day. Well, very in terms. Uh, it's somewhat around between 25 and 30 degrees. And uh, you can hear that announce announcer here uh, was very excited and he was trying to make everyone excited too. So it was very nice atmosphere. Let's go! So I've been here in the second uh, gate, which was nice because you kind of don't have anyone uh, which are a lot slower in front. So most of those guys are ready to participate at the full throttle right from the start. And you can expect that uh, it will be exactly this way. So it's my second time I'm in Dignalina racing here. And uh, last year I went uh, on the left. It was a huge loop. And well, this time I decided to cut this corner uh, uphill and see how it goes. Well, it probably went a bit uh, better. So this is uh, straight uh, to the forest. And I noticed that in front you can see the guy in Asporta's uh, jersey, it's Ignas Ambrosas and uh, he's a very strong rider, so I decided to at least try to follow him for a while. Definitely I wasn't expecting to sit on his wheel, but at least he was a guidance uh, at the uh, start straight and uh, upcoming uphill to see uh, how to go and uh, here I decided to make an overtake on the left even though it was uh, quite sandy but I noticed that Ignas in front is doing a similar thing so it's just kind of a good uh, measurement when you see that someone is already doing that that means it's possible to ride on that part so you just uh, try to copy that if you had some powers and here we are coming into a double track and the guy in front with 31 uh, bib jersey was going straight in all that mud so I wasn't very happy about that uh, because uh, if you go on the a wheel of hour and you just follow him and he's doing something you wouldn't want to do and you don't have enough time to counter steer so I just decided to keep the distance and you can see that uh, I didn't lost anything here because it was uh, sandy downhill and the ones we w which were in front up to this moment uh, were not far away uh, yet so that making a gap decision was uh, not the worst one uh, I made during the race. And here was the station where we almost uh, hit with the handlebars. I will showcase this once again because on the normal speed you won't see uh, it in the full uh, beauty. Basically the guy was uh, riding on a rigid fork and uh, in front there was uh, some roots so he just without any thinking turned to the right and uh, we almost uh, crashed there but uh, we managed to get out of way uh, of this situation and we continue 
going it's 10 minutes into the course and I lost a lot of time on this uh, grass section because in front there was also a guy with a rigid fork so I assume he was a bit struggling on this non-rolling part so I decided to make an overtake here even though it was into nothing but uh, at least uh, I could just try to uh, follow the front uh, as much as possible but uh, you can see that uh, guys are already uh, quite far away you just need to add a lot of effort to catch them my plan for the race was uh, to try to keep with the front as much as possible uh, on the first lap and then we will see how it goes but uh, already 10 minutes into the race and uh, my plan is falling apart a bit but definitely since I'm executing this race for a first time in uh, sports group you will see Mantas public is here shortly posing for the camera so it's yet again a trial and error experience where at some point you don't know uh, how to act during the race because it's your kind of first time in such distance and uh, in such uh, course so you just uh, try to feel how your legs are coming along and then do the actions on the spot and you can see that uh, even though the gap doesn't seem to be very huge uh, to the other group in front I didn't manage to sit on Manta's wheel here and I decided that since in front there will be some sort of single track so you can see that here are them um, here is a table for uh, segment so I managed to keep the effort of 330 watts uh, for this 10 minute segment so it was uh, not bad and you can see that I managed to uh, catch the group on the uphill which was my uh, plan if it would be successful and it did so even though some uh, went uh, already in front I managed to catch at least those guys so that means I wouldn't have to suffer on upcoming gravel road alone so that was good and uh, this is the probably one of the most famous uh, parts of the course because after this turn uh, there will be a house where on every year's event uh, yeah I didn't show it here but basically uh, those people who live there uh, they always support the music uh, uh, snacks uh, water etc so that's a nice place on the race on this single track I noticed that in front uh, there is Martina Stamoulis so that means uh, I probably am still in good company here if I will be able to carry the speed they are carrying here and uh, here was a situation that uh, the gap started to increase and I decided to put an extra effort to catch uh, those guys uh, running away because this was like uh, three to four kilometers uh, length of gravel if not more so going this alone would mean uh, you would either have to wait for other group behind or just suffer and I managed to catch those guys but here was a situation that Mantas Talunas kind of looked like he's going to uh, sit on those wheels he moved to the right and then moved again to the left and that made me uh, stop a bit and that stoppage time was uh, too long for me to try to carry with that group so I decided to just wait for hours because we were not uh, too far away and then uh, better off continue with them rather than trying to chase what's probably even uh, too much for me so thanks for those guys uh, who uh, allowed me to go in the middle 
and here is the longest climb of lap so yet again uh, everyone is uh, running at the constant speed so do I but uh, my constant speed uphill is uh, a bit faster it seemed to be and uh, I managed to catch few of them here I should mention that uh, in these participants uh, which we are riding together there are some who ride uh, two laps but they are fast enough and uh, they are pushing uh, together the, the guys who were running three laps so if you don't see a jersey uh, on the back uh, which doesn't have a bip that most likely mean that those guys we were running uh, two laps not three ones but uh, i probably should mention that some uh, didn't apply that uh, bib number onto their back so that's not always the case so we can see that i averaged uh, a fourth lap of five kilometers at 292 watts and my heart rate BPM was uh, 175 which is kind of a normal thing uh, for me and here I knew that it will be turn to the left but for some reason I stick uh, to a wheel of up front guys and uh, we almost crashed here even though by camera it doesn't portray the distance uh, of uh, actual real life I will continue after this uphill this was very nice action because guys were putting water ice uh, and a lot of support in that part because it was a really a hard one so thanks a lot for those uh, who uh, been at that spot for all three laps so yeah uh, continuing my thought about the camera and the angle keep in mind that if you see that the distance uh, to the upfront uh, rider is uh, relatively big well it's not actually the case because it's a super wide lens with max lens applied meaning that it's even more uh, it adds even more depth uh, to the field and uh, the distance is a lot smaller in reality than it is uh, from this uh, angle and from this uh, lens so that's something to keep in mind when uh, you might think that well you should stick to others wheel better than you are doing at some point definitely but in some cases it's not always uh, true uh, so in front there was a guy uh, who was running uh, rigid fork and a hardtail so on this uh, gravel road I decided not to try to uh, chase him because he was strong and uh, he was also uh, th those details uh, commented before uh, that means that he was running uh, faster than me so trying to catch him in such uh, area of a course would be complicated and I would lose a lot of effort doing that so because I knew that in front there will be uh, some not that fast rolling sections I decided to wait for it and we'll see how it goes and you can see that here I decided my decisions are decisions so that uh, it's uh, the best time to try to catch those highs in front there was also Remigius Leishunas who usually uh, runs very fast in the beginning and then if powers uh, allows him to do he continues that otherwise he just uh, let off a throttle a bit that was the case and you can hear that something started to uh, make strange noises uh, actually it was coming from the cranks and I thought that uh, maybe I didn't uh, put enough torque uh, to the bolts but uh, after few 
bushes. It kind of disappeared later down the road and I managed to ride further. And on the left you could have seen Lina Strauskas uh, who made a puncture. And later down the road uh, he managed to catch us. And he told that uh, he added uh, air two times and then just changed the tube and he still managed to catch us uh, later down the road so that was uh, nice of him and uh, yeah so almost half an hour with a uh, few uh, parts where I uh, raced together with that guy uh, from focus team so I was running alone uh, it was uh, not very uh, nice experience uh, going alone but uh, yeah so here I decided to go in front of this guy because uh, there was upcoming uh, downhill um, into those uh, grass sections so you will uh, notice them uh, in upcoming few moments and because he was the rigid fork I thought that well probably I should go in front uh, in order not to lose even more time yeah and uh, in the back I saw in one uphill that there is a group coming after me but I decided to add as much power as I can and if they will catch me then that's uh, very great otherwise um, maybe I will be able to catch someone in front rather than just waiting yeah so the strange noises coming from the bike uh, was still happening from time to time I will have to yet again do the maintenance and uh, I almost uh, do maintenance of a bike as frequently as I ride on it <laughs> and the reason why I do that is because I love to understand how the uh, technique which how the actual parts and the whole structure of the bike works because uh, if at some point you need to do maintenance and uh, no one can help you how you are going to do that so that's the main reason why I'm trying to do maintenance on my own uh, definitely not about the suspension uh, yet yeah that was a nice moment when we uh, crossed the tra trajectories like in F1 then someone uh, comes from the outside of the corner uh, radius and our goes in, in the center in the inside yeah so here uh, David Svalunas from Kona Cycling team uh, decided to uh, left the group leave the group and uh, go along so that was a brave move by him rather than just sitting in the group and waiting for something to happen he made a move and he managed to catch me Unfortunately, at some point, uh, Davis got cramps. And this, on the right, where was a situation where uh, there was a tree on the course and I was going to overtake uh, Vasily uh, Vitali Osipenko, sorry. And I noticed that uh, tree and had to put down the throttle in order not to hit that. So I believe that uh, such situations shouldn't happen on the course and uh, such obstacles should be removed uh, from the track yeah so about Davis he got a cramps uh, yet again and uh, he finished a bit after me but uh, I believe that if no issues he could have done even better and this was Azushile or something like that uh, downhill uh, segment and as usual in the highlights and the full on board video which I'm going to upload later you can see uh, some segment information uh, from the course I'm not adding Tole! Давай, Tomo, Kabinkis! Давай, давай, давай! I'm not adding all of those segments on the video because it would be just uh, too overcrowded but uh, some uh, info here and there is nice to have in my opinion and that was the footage from uh, Linus Bonis 
who uh, was working on the course and uh, filmed me so thanks for him uh, for making that capture and yet again we are going on this paved road into this nice place where someone decided to stop and look at something uh, in the middle of the course so that's uh, not the best move and here we received some water some ice cubes uh, to put under our jersey so thanks a lot guys uh, for that support again So that's a segment Last Dance 2021. This part was added uh, last year and uh, it was decided to leave the same course as last year uh, for Ignalina. So probably that's a nice segment. So more or less from this moment we were riding three of us. It was Ivaras Meshkauskas and Antanas Juraevichus. So it was a great company. Um, up to the somewhat of uh, first part of third lap. I will continue about that uh, after we reach that part. But basically uh, we were running in a group uh, maybe not the most efficiently to say the least. But it was uh, still better than uh, doing it uh, all alone. And this is uh, the guy who was running uh, two laps. So. He stayed with us for a while and then uh, decided to add that extra effort and uh, see how it goes. And this section was also uh, a bit crowded with uh, spectators and support, so thanks for everybody who shared their energy with us. And here we finally got an extra pair of uh, bottles with water. Ivaras made a nice whip here. Actually, it was a place where uh, it lifted off uh, quite significantly. Uh, and if you go at full throttle, you could fly uh, significantly too. So yeah, here we are still running three of us, uh, sometimes uh, me or Antanas or Iros uh, went in front and lead it. And here uh, Opel uh, driver decided that uh, she don't want to wait until we pass uh, her by and just block the, the road, but well. Not everyone uh, that much thorough and uh, reasonable. So yeah, we were riding here, three of us, and we kind of let off the throttle because there was no one in front, uh, no one uh, from the back, and we were running a bit too slow. Um, you can see that our average was 260 watts for me and it was uh, significantly slower and with less effort uh, than uh, up to this part of the course so it was a a bit of a wrong move by us because here we already noticed that someone is coming from the back uh, even though there was still a gap but uh, it didn't mean uh, easy finish for us so we just uh, try to add that extra effort and uh, uh, get away from that upcoming group and here you will see and you're already seeing that I'm uh, using uh, hydrogel from power bar uh, I kind of like that uh, uh, manufacturer and that uh, gel because of the consistency uh, of the uh, gel itself so it's a liquid based and that means you don't need to 
<laughs> you can see the kittens here on the, on the road. So basically, you don't need to add that extra water in order to uh, make your mouth not that dry. In the past, I was uh, using Martin quite a lot, but uh, I, for that reason, I decided not to use Martin here because uh, it just makes your mouth full of gel and uh, you need to add that extra water in order to uh, clean away uh, that taste. But those hydrogels, even though they are very uh, nice to consume, they didn't, at least it didn't felt uh, that they add any benefit of using them. It's just I'm not expecting some super boost or anything like that, but uh, even though if you're consuming it, you don't feel any uh, benefit at all, so I believe that uh, it was not the right uh, nutrition for me. And here was a situation that Antana Siravich just uh, hit my rear wheel and fell off the bike, so that cost him like uh, 10 to 15 seconds to get up and catch the catch us uh, at least try to catch us and here once again i let the guy left the guys in front and made a gap between us and then added that close to 1000 1, uh, watts of effort in order to return back so that's just uh, some lessons uh, i shall learn for myself not to do that but you can see that my uh, bpm here was already up to the sky and probably that was just a result and here once again the gap opens up and i'm uh, closing it down with uh, yet again a lot of effort then i'm putting off the throttle again and just Seeing those after the fact uh, looks so dumb, so stupid, but uh, what can you do? You can at least try to learn uh, from what you made uh, wrongly in the past and try not to repeat those mistakes. So Myers Witsakauskas already managed to catch us uh, by this moment. But he had some problems with uh, shifting and he had to stop. So here we are going with Ivaras Mashkauskas. And Lena Sastrauskas already managed to catch us. So he was more than two minutes behind us uh, after two laps. Yeah, it's, it's kind of two minutes. And then he managed to close that gap and uh, Catches. So I was asked uh, whether I'm going to try to uh, follow those guys in front. I was not exactly sure. I didn't felt uh, very well because I had cramps on my uh, left. Uh, well, actually, whole uh, upper part of uh, uh, left leg was with cramps. I was drinking only water. That was a also yet another stupid move uh, during the race. And here yet another stupid move. I decided on the corner to drink and then almost uh, went off. And you could have seen that here was an interesting situation. I will continue that. But basically, uh, I think that if an arrow is in front, you should go in front and don't cut that corner on the right. Uh, while quite a lot of guys uh, made that cut. I don't think that it's a lot of uh, gain from that cut on the right, but it's either organizer should put an arrow where uh, riders should go, or otherwise uh, make a stop uh, fence in order to block that road and don't leave those open uh, situations. <laughs> those guys were amazing. So thanks once again for them. Uh, yeah, so to continue this further about the drinking, I drink, I drank uh, water, and in the last few kilometers, I drank like three times. Uh, sip here, sip there. <laughs> that was a stupid move by me.
<laughs> and here, five seconds after we talked about whether someone is coming or not, we noticed uh, like a few hundred meters in the back there is a guy. It was uh, Vitaly Osipenko. And with Antanas, we decided to finish together, but once we saw that guy coming, we kind of tried to uh, push a bit. But since he was running really fast and we had an agreement uh, not to. Uh, finish uh, separately so I decided not to try to catch him either probably I wouldn't be able to but uh, usually I just Great put job. that extra effort in the end but because we had that agreement we decided to just finish in this style for once and uh, yeah one place here or there it doesn't uh, mean anything but you just have to uh, be true for yourself and here was uh, the result and the video is already finished uh, I kind of thought to comment about last year event but there was not enough time so uh, the guy which uh, overtook us was Vitaly Osipenko he is from Ukraine so that was our gift for him as well uh, to finish Ivarus did a great job as well. Where you were coming from? <laughs> nice job. Nice. Yeah, so he made a great effort. And actually, uh, huh? after two laps, uh, Vitaly was more than one minute uh, behind us. And actually, after the uh, middle time of the third lap he was still one minute behind us but then he managed to do that so this was the highlights of Ignalina uh, thanks for your time and I hope to see you around I will also upload a full on board so that was kind of it cheers